Welcome to our channel. Imagine yourself enjoying a great day on a gorgeous beach, enjoying the sun, touching the sand, when suddenly your phone alarm goes off with the message, Tsunami Warning. Do you have a plan for where to go and what to do? Would you recognize the warning signals of an incoming tsunami if there were no alarms? Would you be able to protect yourself? No? Then keep watching. A tsunami is a set of extraordinarily lengthy waves brought on by a significant and abrupt movement of the water, typically brought on by an earthquake at or near the ocean's bottom. Waves produced by this power travel in all directions away from their source, occasionally spanning whole ocean basins. Tsunamis go through the whole water column, from the ocean floor to the surface, in contrast to wind-driven waves, which only pass through the highest layer of the ocean. These tsunamis pose serious risks to property, infrastructure, resources, economies, and human health. Long-lasting effects may be felt inland as well as along the shore. Near their source, where there is little time for warning, tsunamis often produce the most severe destruction and fatalities. Large tsunamis can yet travel to remote shorelines and cause extensive damage. For instance, the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami had an effect on 17 nations in Southeast and Southern Asia, as well as Eastern and Southern Africa. What causes tsunami? Earthquakes on convergent tectonic plate borders are the main source of tsunamis. Over 80% of potential tsunamis since 1900, according to the Global Historical Tsunami Database, have been caused by earthquakes. However, landslides, volcanic eruptions, certain meteorological conditions, and possibly close-to-Earth objects such as asteroids, comets crashing into or exploding over the ocean can also result in tsunamis. Once a tsunami has formed, the ocean's depth affects how quickly it moves. A tsunami's wavelength, or the space between its crests, can be hundreds of miles long and travel at speeds up to 500 miles per hour in the deep ocean. The peak of a tsunami wave seldom rises more than three feet above the ocean swell in deep water, making it unlikely for mariners to see it as it passes beneath them. Small variations in sea level height can be detected by NOAA Deep Ocean Assessment and reporting of tsunami, DART, systems in the deep ocean, which can then send this information to tsunami warning centers. Warning center. The location and timing of the next tsunami are unknown to scientists. However, the tsunami warning centers are able to send out alerts when a tsunami is probable since they are aware of which earthquakes are likely to produce one. They keep an eye on deep ocean and coastal sea level monitoring networks set up to identify tsunamis, and they utilize the data from these networks to anticipate the effects on the shore and direct local evacuation choices. Since the tsunami that hit the Indian Ocean in 2004, Tsunami warning systems have significantly improved. Scientists at NOAA are aiming to make warning center operations even better and to support community response readiness. Early signs of tsunami. Along the shoreline. Fortunately, there are a few simple natural warning signs that can help you realize when a tsunami is about to strike. They include intense movement of the ground as a result of an earthquake. If you are near the shore and there is an earthquake, it may have created a tsunami. Thus, quickly flee to higher ground or inland, avoiding river valleys. Irregular sea level changes. A warning indicator that a tsunami may be on the horizon is the changes in coastal waters that ought to be noticed quickly. Avoid river valleys and promptly seek higher ground if you notice the water receding suddenly and abruptly from a beach, revealing the ocean bottom the so-called drawback, and for the love of God, don't go near it to investigate it. A massive wave. If you notice an unusually enormous wave, be aware that it may not be the last big wave in a tsunami wave train, and that even larger waves may be on the way. Avoid river valleys and quickly retreat to higher ground or inland. Loud waves roaring. A tsunami may be approaching if you hear an offshore roaring sound like that of a train or jet plane. You should quickly flee to higher ground or inland, staying away from river valleys. If you see any of the aforementioned events, leave right away without waiting for formal evacuation instructions. After a tsunami strikes the shore, avoid going back to low-lying areas since additional waves are likely to arrive after the initial one, and each wave might last up to 30 minutes. The threat might linger for many hours or perhaps up to 24 hours. How to survive? Now that you have noticed the signs, what must you do? 
These are the ways to react and survive a tsunami if you find yourself in the path of danger. 1. Evacuate on foot if possible. Following an earthquake, bridges and roadways may be damaged or closed. If there is a recent earthquake, start moving on foot right away. To prevent becoming stuck in a car in a risky area, run or walk towards safety. Avoid any damaged roads, bridges, or structures that can collapse. To be extra safe, try to walk as much as you can on open ground. 2. Get to high ground. During a tsunami, high ground is the safest place to be. Don't wait for a formal tsunami warning if there is an earthquake. Go as rapidly as you can to the closest high ground to escape danger as soon as the shaking stops and it is safe to move. After an earthquake, you do not need to flee to higher ground if you don't reside in a tsunami hazard area. If you are not told to evacuate the area by the authorities, stay put. 3. Go as far inland as possible. The less risk you face, the further you are from the shore. Pick a high spot that is as far inland from the coast as you can. Simply go as far inland as you can if there is no high ground available. In certain situations, tsunamis can travel up to 16 kilometers inland. However, how far they can travel is influenced by the shoreline's form and slope. 4. Climb to the top of a building if you're trapped. You might not have enough time to flee in some situations. If you don't have enough time to flee and reach higher ground, climb to the third or higher story of a sturdy building. Better still, attempt to go to the roof of the tallest, sturdiest structure you can locate. Both of these alternatives are preferable to none. A large tsunami evacuation tower could be close by if you're directly on the coast. Follow the indications for the evacuation route to the tower and climb the stairs to the top. And when all other high ground is taken as a final option, climb a tall, strong tree. 5. Grab something floating if you're in the water. In the event that you get caught by a tsunami's waves, this could help keep you safe. Find a substantial object, such as a tree, a door, or a life raft. Hold the item as strongly as you can and allow the waves to carry you away. Try your best not to drink any of the water, even if it might be challenging right now. Chemicals and garbage that might be dangerous to your health can be picked up by tsunamis along with debris. 6. Stay in your safe spot for at least 8 hours. The duration of a tsunami might last up to 8 hours or more. To be safe, stay inland and away from the coast at this time. Keep an eye out for official announcements and only move when instructed to do so. They have the most expertise in such matters. Trust them. You must stay put and make an effort to maintain your composure, even if you are stressed out and concerned about loved ones. Don't jeopardize your life by attempting to meet someone in another location as life is not a TV show. 7. Go out to sea if you're in a boat. If you're on the sea during a tsunami, moving farther from shore will keep you safer. Face the waves as you steer your boat out into the wide water as far as you can. If a tsunami warning is issued for the region, never head back to the port. Your boat might capsize as a result of the hazardous currents and water levels brought on by tsunami action close to the shore. Immediately exit your boat if it is already docked in a harbor and get inland to safety if possible. And that's how you can survive the danger of a tsunami. Outro. And that is it for today's video. I hope you find it interesting and informative. Make sure to give it a like, share it with your friends, comment and subscribe to our channel down below. Tap on the bell icon so you never miss any upload. I will see you next time. Goodbye.